Chapter 6 Baseball is reassuring. It makes me feel as if the world is not going to blow up. Sharon Olds, The Sporting Life Honey sniffed back her tears. The sound caught Vanessa's attention. Her face softened. With great ceremony, while the sun baked the day and even the breeze stood still as a statue, Finesse took a handkerchief from her tote bag and dotted it around her face. Do forgive me, Miame, she said. It's the heat. Il faut chaud. And it's my passion. I care so much about this pageant, and we have scarcely two weeks to prepare for the production on Independence Day. I have been charged with such great responsibility. House spit into the dirt at his feet. Klebo spit into the solidary with House. Ball player standing at the back. Spit. Ruby spit. There was a momentary spitting party. Let's take a moment to regroup, Miame, said Finesse. She fanned her face with her handkerchief. In fact, let's all take a moment to breathe. Breathe. She stretched her arms over her head. A little yoga, perhaps, to bring us back to center. She gestured in Ruby's direction. Sit, sit. Ruby rolled her eyes and did as she was told. George tugged on Ruby's overalls. I thought your mama didn't sign you up, he whispered. Miss Maddie signed her up, said Melba. Now hush. Klebo slid herself along the trunk of the chinaberry tree and plopped onto the dirt and berries underneath. The creases on the jeans were all but gone. Your mama's gonna whoop you with them stained pants, said Wilkie. Are you speaking from experience? asked Klebo. My mama ain't never whooped me in her life. I'm just saying, said Wilkie. Everybody knows she likes her laundry just so. Several ball players began the sunshine laundry chant. Klebo groaned and rested his head on his crossed arms. Finesse clapped her hands. Come to order, Mia May. Time to get to work. House lowered himself to the earth next to Klebo at the trunk of the chinaberry tree. Honey dropped like a wilted little leaf into her brother's lap. Next to them, Eudora Weltley panted and snuffled. Finesse continued, Our play will emanate from within. We will decide together its shape. To help us decide, we will incorporate le relaxation techniques, basic seniority and imagination exercises. In short, we will experience a renaissance, a rebirth of the art of the organic playmaking tradition. We will honor Aurora County, a county full of American towns. On America's birthday, we will celebrate our wonderful past and our glorious present. Every detail of our lives here in Aurora County is important, important. She took a deep breath, smiled broadly at Honey. For instance, she said, you want to dance? And it's coming to me. Let me see. She put the back of her hand onto her head and did small fainting backward move and right at herself. Yes, I've got it. How do you feel about the dance of the moon pie fairy? She asked. I can see it now. Honey sat up straight and spoke with great hope in her voice. Does she wear tap shoes? She leaned forward to hear the verdict. Fairies wear wings and sparkles, said Finesse with finality, and they dance barefoot. Honey burst into tears. Finesse clasped her hands under her chin and gave honey an asphyxiated look please don't cry you must learn to trust my direction honey sobbed while finesse babbled on eudora weltley crept on her belly toward honey and snuffled her snout into honey's lap house patted on both the dog and his sister maybe he could strangle finesse later he glared at her as she postured in front of everyone like she was a queen bee, and they were her drones. She probably would live to be older than Mr. Norwood Boyd. She'd probably live to be one hundred. We're sinking like the Titanic, moaned Klebo. Now what? Finesse lifted one leg and pointed her toe for effect, as she demonstrated various modern dance possibilities. I wanted, wanted to be a tap dancer house. Honey whispered to her brother in a jagged little hiccup. I don't want, want to be in this pageant. Everything's going to be all right, honey, said House. He gave honey to Klebo, who patted on a patch of grass underneath the chinaberry tree. 
Honey and Eudora both crowded onto it and rested their weary spirits. House rose to his feet. Look, Francis, he interrupted Finesse's discourse on the benefits of unscripted skits and spontaneous combustion dialogue. Excuse him, what? Now that we're standing there, now that he was standing there, he cast about for something to say. We're melting out here. Let's go into the schoolhouse. Finesse shook her head. There's construction in there. We're not allowed inside. Melba Jane raised her hand. A question, said Finesse, delight in her voice. Melba swallowed. Is it true that the new stage will have footlights? My oy, chirped Finesse. The new stage will be shiny. It will have footlights. An enormous spotlight, working microphones, and more. Melba's face radiated happiness, and Finesse seized the moment while she had it. I remember you, Melba Jane. You sang in the opera every August. You have the autar in your blood, my omui. Come stand with me. I dub you my Sancho Panza. I will be your Don Quixote. Really? Melba whispered. Don't do it, Melba, said Ruby. We don't know those guys. But Melba rose entranced, and floated towards her Don Quixote.